the headless virgin. <laughs> if there was one thing all the residents on Selby Avenue had in common, it was an affinity for mowing their lawns in the summertime. <laughs> From June to September, one could not escape the incessant drone of an electric lawnmower somewhere in the distance. Perhaps the worst lawn mowing offender was our neighbor, Elmer Dunn. <laughs> Mr. Dump was a cantankerous 68-year-old bachelor who lived one door down and across the street from us in a two-story brick house with yellow trim. In the summer months, he would mow his lawn every day, sometimes twice a day. It was a very long and complicated procedure that took several hours to complete as it involved a number of, ver of various different machines. A lawn mower, a weed whacker, a hedge trimmer, and a leaf blower. The cacophony, my father once complained. Why does he have to use so many noisy machines to do his yard work? I don't know. Why don't you go over there and ask, my mother replied as she flipped through the latest Woman's Day magazine. My father snorted. <clears throat> like, that would do any good. The man's a lunatic, and everyone knows he can't reason with a crazy person. Oh, believe me, my mother replied. I know. <laughs> Over the years, Mr. Dump developed a reputation in the neighborhood for being both crazy and reclusive. He went to great lengths to separate himself from all the other neighbors. For instance, every year in early autumn, there would be a block party on Selby Avenue. The street would be closed off to traffic, and everyone in the neighborhood would gather outside for a potluck picnic and games. Everyone, that is, except for Elmer Dump. He remained cooped up inside his little brick house, scowling down at our jubilation with disgust from one of the upstairs windows. Why don't you think he wants to come down here? I asked my older sister Georgia one year at the party. We were standing in the street looking up at him as he glowered down at us. Because he's a dick. A flaccid old piece of shit dick. Georgia never liked Mr. Dunn. It all began the year he yelled at her for ringing her doorbell on, for ringing his doorbell on Halloween. She was 10 or 11 at the time. I had been stuck home with the chicken pox that year, but according to my sister, the story went something like this. She rang Mr. Dump's doorbell. He didn't answer at first, so she rang again. Moments later, the front door flew open. What? The old man barked. Trick or treat, my sister held out her pillowcase. Fuck off! Mr. Dump hollered, then slammed the door in her face. After that, Georgia swore off trick-or-treating for good. While Mr. Dunn may not have participated in the annual Selby Avenue block party, or holidays like Halloween, he did partake in Christmas. Each December, he would set up his 14-piece, near-life-size nativity scene outside in his front yard. It included all of Christmas's major players. The Virgin Mary, Joseph, the baby Jesus, an angel of some sort, the wise men, a shepherd boy, and a few animals. Much like mowing his lawn, the process of setting up the nativity scene took hours and required a lot of shifting, then unshifting, then shifting back the various figurines until Mr. Dump got it just right. Then one year, something bad happened. In the middle of the night, someone, a teenager perhaps, or a vagabond passing through town, snuck into Mr. Dump's yard and stole the baby Jesus. Not only that, but they also severed Mary's head from her body, <laughs> then placed it in the Savior's empty crib with a handwritten note that read, Hark! Behold the headless virgin. <laughs> the ensuing morning, Mr. Dump drafted a letter condemning whoever was responsible for beheading the Holy Virgin and then threatening to contact the local authorities. He then distributed copies of it to everyone on the block before moving the entire 14-piece nativity scene from his front yard and onto his front porch, which was enclosed. Because the figurines were near life size and Mr. Dump's front porch wasn't very large, he had to cram the statue so close together that it didn't look like a nativity scene anymore so much as it did an orgy. He tried reattaching Mary's head but was unsuccessful, and so to this very day, she remains headless. Years later, I was snooping through George's room in search of her diary when I discovered an oddly shaped package wrapped in a beach towel and duct tape on the top shelf of her closet. I took it down and carefully unwrapped it. Inside was Mr. Dump's baby Jesus. After silently congratulating my sister on a job well done, 
I rewrapped the package as best I could, then quietly set it back where I found it. Because it's true what they say. Some secrets are better left buried, and others make for really great stories. Thank you.